Good morning, and welcome to our 2015 update on the Insight Project for newborn sequencing in genomic medicine and public health. I'm Anastasia Wise, and I'm a program director at the NHGRI National Human Genome Research Institute at the NIH. And my fellow program director, Tina Irv, will be following me to tell you a little bit about the Insight program and provide you a brief introduction to the the group before we have each of our investigative teams provide you a brief update about where they now stand with their project. So to get started, we'd like to tell you a little bit about DNA sequencing, which all of these projects make use of. So DNA sequencing determines the order of the four chemical bases, or ACGTs, that make up a DNA molecule. And you can use a number of different technologies or devices in order to perform this DNA sequencing to determine the base's order. From sequence information, we can determine which stretches of DNA contain genes, and furthermore, where there are regulatory stretches which contain instructions which let us know whether the genes are turned on or off. From this information in the genes, we can also find regions which are just the exons or coding regions. And in these regions, we can sometimes find variants that are associated with disease. Many of these projects will be making use of two different types of sequencing, which you'll hear about today. One of these is exome sequencing, and the other is genome sequencing. When you're talking about genome sequencing, it's like the whole pie. So in genome sequencing, you're looking at analyzing all of the three billion base pairs that are in humans at once, and we're able to sequence most of them. But when you're talking about exome sequencing, we're just selectively looking at just one little slice of that pie, and it's capturing about 1% of the human genome, which are those exons or coding regions of the DNA. Lately, the cost of sequencing in general has been dropping as new technologies are developed. And this allows us to gain a better understanding of variation in the human genome and to consider new uses for sequencing technology. And so one of the questions that we had is how could sequencing technology be applied in the newborn period, and what opportunities would it lend? And so I'll turn it over to Tina to tell you a little bit more about how we're thinking about using sequencing in the newborn period. So hi, I'm Tina Irv. I'm from NICHD, and I'm a program officer. So newborn screening is a highly success successful national public health program. In the United States, we screen about 4 million babies each year. And the purpose of newborn screening is really to identify the babies with serious conditions so that treatment can begin before any harmful effects can happen. So at the NIH, we started thinking, what if we combined genome sequencing and newborn screening? What could we do? In 2010, the NIH coordinated a meeting. Experts from academia, industry, and federal agencies in the fields of newborn screening and genomics participated. The outcome of the meeting was that people felt that it was important to evaluate genomic data in newborns using newborn screening as a framework. And it was important to prioritize clinical validity and clinical utility not just analytic validity. So we really wanted to see that it would make a difference for the babies and their families. It was also important to address ethical, legal, and social concerns. So we decided to come up with a um, project that focused on we wanted to explore in a limited but deliberate manner opportunities to use genomic information for broadening our understanding of disease identified in the newborn period. So each of the projects that came in under this program had to address one or more of the following questions. They wanted to look at, for disorders currently screened for in newborns across the United States, how can genomic sequencing replicate or add to the knowledge of newborn screening? What knowledge about conditions not currently screened for in newborns could genomic sequencing provide some answers for? And what additional clinical information could be learned from genomic sequencing relevant to clinical care in newborns? Each of the projects has three components. One, the, the technical component, as we call it, is the genomic sequencing. The second is a clinical research, really looking at the clinical care of the infant. 
And the third is the ethical, legal, and social implications of doing sequencing at such a young age. The awardees of our Insight Grants are Robert Green and Alan Beggs of Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Stephen Kingsmore, and that project is located at Children's Mercy Hospital in Kansas City, as well as Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego, Jennifer Puck, um, Barbara Koenig, and Puyan Kwok of University of San Francisco. And then we have the final project, Cynthia Powell and Jonathan Berg are at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And back to Anastasia. So thank everyone for joining us today. And I just wanted to let folks know that unfortunately we are not going to be able to take any questions during the presentations today. But we will be posting the entire live broadcast online at the website that you can see on this slide, as well as making the slides available. And if you have any further questions that you would like to have addressed, please feel free to reach out to our NIH media contacts. On the website, we also have the press contacts listed for all of the individual sites, and you can feel free to reach out to them as well. And we'd be happy to take your questions and try and provide answers to them offline. Thank you very much. And I'll now turn it over to Cynthia Powell.